when you're not going to make it, when it's time to just take that L, is when you are not growing. This is a huge one. This is so big. Because if you're not growing, then you're standing still. Or in a scientific way, when we don't grow, that represents death. Literally. We're always changing. Our hair is growing. Our, our, um, our, you know, as we get older, we start to shrink a little bit because our bones shrink. Um, our body weight changes. Our cells are moving all the time. If you think about it from a scientific standpoint, not moving is, is, uh, um, as entropy, it's, it's, it's death. It's, it's, um, it, it, things just stop. When we're overly committed, and I talk about this in my, um, in today's newsletter, the link is right below at joindamon.me. When we are just focused on one particular outcome in one particular way, that narrows our field of vision. And when our, our field of vision is too narrow, then we don't realize all the other parts of us, all the other ways that we can express ourselves that are not, that are not being fed. You're either investing into a, becoming a better self. I talked about the earlier in the episode with the daily stoic, we're either investing into becoming a better self or we're stalling. We're BSing, I'm trying to keep it PG. We're BSing. We're either investing or we're BSing. That's probably the quote of the day for this episode. We're either investing or we're BSing. What that means is that when I was in grad school, I went to Northwestern, shout out to Chicago and Evanston. The money I put in, the time put in, put a lot of energy into it. And I was still quite young. So it was a really big commitment for, you know, me being in my early 20s. And that investment money wise and otherwise end up being the foundation of what I'm doing now and maybe without Northwestern I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now and I wouldn't have the community that you guys have built with me that's an investment so the year I spent it's a year-long program so the year I spent in grad school it wasn't wasted time because it was an investment now if I was in grad school for plumbing nothing wrong with plumbers but if I was in the equivalent of grad school or advanced level trade school for plumbers, I like water. I was born in Atlantic City. Water's cool. I like eating seafood. <laughs> Do I like toilets and sewage and pipes? Unless it's Mario Brothers. No, not my thing. You know, I know plumbers. They're great. It's, just, it's not my thing. That would be stalling. Now, sometimes we stall or we're BSing because of outward concerns. Um, my family expects this of me, or I like this title, and this is my identity. I dealt with this a lot when I sold my last startup, Cuddler, because I identified myself as the co-founder of a very successful startup. I remember I was writing for Inc. Magazine. You can still catch my Inc. Magazine column at Inc.com, or at the, the, um, some of the links below at uh, bringyourworth.tv. And I remember um, getting my column over there several years ago. And I turned in my bio and I said, okay, yeah, I just sold my startup. So it said, Dane Brown is former co-founder of the startup Cuddler, which connected people for hugs. It was just acquired, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember my editor at the time, shout out to him, said, well, I'm going to go ahead and change this because you, because you're still a co-founder. And I was like, no, actually, I, I don't think you understand. <laughs> I, I sold the company that's <laughs> it got acquired and he's like yeah but once a co-founder always a co-founder and i was like oh you're right <laughs> but there's this identity crisis that sometimes happens where when we're letting something go we feel like that a part of us is going away with it and my and my business coach i call that our toolbox you can get fired from a million teen jobs you can have your heart broken 20 million times. I don't wish that, on you, but it does happen. You could be going through all kinds of stuff. You could, you know, be a parent that loses a child in sympathy and empathy for, you know, whatever you might be going through. But you're still a parent. You still would have been loved and had been a lover. You still had, if you got fired from all those jobs, these skills, they didn't take those skills from you. 
as I say in my book, Career Remix, the job is theirs, but the career is ours. You take that shit with you. See, there's, there's my mouth again. <laughs> Something about today. I swear there's nothing, nothing but tonic water in this. But, you know, you take that with you. It's the same thing. Same thing. You know, just like the, the person I was talking in the Amazon comments about relationships and taking an L in relationships. It's like, yeah, but you learn from it. And also, you are in a relationship. I know some folks that have never been in a relationship, at least a serious one. I know some folks that have never been in love. That in itself, again, like having a child or whatever, the roll of the dice, the amount of circumstances, the the Google, and I don't mean the company, the Google of circumstances that need to overlap for you to even have that opportunity. That in itself creates gratitude once you understand it. If you're in a situation where you don't want to be there anymore, but you're not leaving, you must be getting something out of it. There's people way wiser than me that have <laughs> done to have entire careers talking about that. But when we're in situations where the door is right there and we don't go, we're getting something out of it. I'm not talking about abusive situations. I'm not talking about, you know, um, situation where we don't have the financial resources i'm talking about that my family's from the hood so it's like i understand like you, sometimes you can't move but if you have the resources and the wherewithal you can literally change the circumstances but you know you got to ask yourself why and you're either growing and you're investing or you're bsing and at a certain point it comes all down to that and thank you for the agreement in the comments even i can't I can't uh, share them online, but I appreciate your, your feedback. One of my favorite books, in fact, probably my favorite book on quitting. It's by my guy who I already mentioned, Seth Godin, The Dip. It is a short book. I think, oh my God, but this, this episode is about an hour long. I think, I think The Dip is shorter than this episode. <laughs> I just realized that we're about, hit, about to hit 58 minutes, which is crazy. I love chilling out with y'all. It's a, a really important topic, and I appreciate y'all feeling it, especially in the comments. Listen, the dip is like 45 minutes long. The book is super, super tiny if you're going to get the physical book. I have the audio book myself. To, to put, it, put it plainly, either we're in a situation, I'm just paraphrasing what Seth said. We're in a situation where we're going through a difficult time, a dip, and that's just part of the ritual as far as us getting good at something as far as us working with something, or it ends up being a thing where, oh my gosh, I think one of my live streams ended because I was cursing too much. Sorry, I lost y'all. <laughs> Hopefully I'll try to get on later. But the, the certain dip, where that's just kind of the rigor or the difficulty of what's going on, with, what's happening. Like, you know, again, me being in grad school, that was hard. That doesn't mean it was a waste of time, it just meant it was hard. I had to grow. That's different than being in a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac, it's French, but it's more of an American term. And it basically means um, a suburban, usually in the suburbs, area where you get to a, a, a street and there's a little circle. And it's a dead end. And people will have, um, have houses there. And if you have kids, it's a place where they can bike safely. I had a couple cul-de-sacs, you know, when I was growing up in and some of the suburbs in America, on the East Coast and in the Midwest. But a cul-de-sac, you just go around and around in a circle. You're not dipping, you're not doing anything like that. So that's what makes it so difficult. And so you have to know the difference between the dip, the, the dip, you're going through a hard time, but it's worth it, and a cul-de-sac where you're going in circles. A great companion to this is when should I quit something? I talk about, excuse me, I talk about some leaders of our time a lot of people that are um, in the creative field, not not leaders like presidents, but people in the creative field and when to get off stage. And it's an important one. Be sure and check it out. It's actually one of my favorite little episodes from back in the day. I'm entrepreneurial coach Damon Brown and Peter Helpy at Side Hustler, a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. You're watching Bring Your Worth at TV every Wednesday at 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free. So have you guys been in a situation where you were, you were, um, 
you thought you were growing, but you were actually, uh, and you thought you were investing, but you were actually were BSing? Or were you in a situation where you thought you were messing around and come to find out it ended up being a really good move for you? I'd love to hear it in the comments. Let us know what's happening.